In the meantime, uh, we got our buddy from Baltimore on the line. Oh, yeah. As Colin has affectionately named him, b the fastest man in comedy, the host of Stay in Your Lane. There he is. Olympic champion, Bernard Williams. How you doing, man? Thanks for calling in again. Always love having you on. Man, I'm doing fantastic. How you feeling fantastic. today? Drop the kids yeah, off like- at school. Just a beautiful day in Baltimore, right? <laughs> there you go. Well, I feel like a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich, man. I feel Ooh. delicious. Excellent. I love it. I feel delicious. So, uh, <laughs> earlier we were doing this list of the top NFL cities. And 1 through 32, we were going through where each of the cities were ranked. We found out the New York Giants and Jets, they're at the bottom of the list. They're 31, 32. The number one NFL city across the country. I'm not so sure how they came up with this. They're basing this off number of touchdowns, the price of the beer, whether or not you can get a cheap meal, Mm -hmm. precipitation. Of course, Indianapolis, they play in a dome, so there is no precipitation. Uh, They take the number one city for NFL cities. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, Where do you think Baltimore falls on the list? You know why? (laughs) Because in Indiana, there's nothing else to do. That's what I said. (laughs) They call it Nap City. You know this, right? Yes. (laughs) They call it Nap City because when you go do a show there, whether it's a comedy show or whether you're going to play a game at an NBA game, you you get there Uh in the afternoon. You go to the mm-hmm. movie theater, you go see a movie, and you go back to the hotel room and you take a nap before the game, right? Absolutely. If, if, if anybody know anything about Indianapolis or Indiana, um, it, it's always rainy, it's always dull, and it just makes you want to go to sleep. So, yeah, I can see everybody really wanting to go to play some football because there's nothing else to do. Exactly. And you get inside the dome, you get out of that rain, you get out of that, that gloom. So where do you think Baltimore falls on this list? One out of 32. Oh, that's because there's a lot of murders going on. So people say, hey, let's go play. Let's go watch some football. We're We're safe in groups. We're safe in groups. So let's go be 60,000 strong. Oh, it's terrible. So Baltimore actually, by the way, shows up at number 11. The number 11 NFL city on this list. That's respectable. Hey, B- Simple Joe's in here. He's he's kind of grimacing because his Boston was number 28 on this list. Yeah. It's too pricey in Boston, man. It's I know. too pricey in Boston. Way too pricey. And that's crazy because Boston, um, when it comes to basketball, they have like one of the best records in the NBA. The Celtics, right yeah, now. man. Yep. By the way, before yeah. we move on, we do have a fuel winner, Drew O'Reilly. Him and his plus one. They won fuel tickets. Mm-hmm. There you go, Drew. There we go. Way to go, Drew. We'll hey. see you out there Friday night. We'll Village Door Music Hall. Looking forward to this. Um, Bernard, I wanted to talk to you about this. So Odell Beckham Jr. has mm-hmm. a bit of a conspiracy theory. I don't yeah. know if it's conspiracy theory. He's got the, the documents to pack it up. Yeah. But he says that he is being drug tested. Way too much. More than other players across the league. And he believes that... Yeah the league is targeting him specifically. Now, the way this is supposed to work, and it's possible that some players get tested more often than others with this system, but you've got, what, a 53-man roster. The rules in the NFL say that of that 53-man roster, 10 of those players will be selected at random to to do a drug test each and every week. But Odell Beckham Jr. is saying that he is basically being asked to give a a drug test sometimes as often as twice a week, and he hasn't missed a week so far this year. Um, Also talking about he has been tested way more times in the offseason than other players have. Now, this is not the first time we've heard this accusation uh, from a player towards the NFL where they felt like they've been singled out. And this is not even OBJ's first time saying this. He believes that he was singled out for the uniform violations, things like wearing the watch and not having his knee pads, covering his knees, where sometimes that's overlooked. But this particular claim, uh, we heard Eric Reed make this claim as well. Mm-hmm. When he was kind of going through the saga alongside Colin Kaepernick, he said that the, the, the NFL, the league, was singling him out and making him perform... Uh, drug test each and every week. Now, we should point out that neither one of these guys has ever refused a drug test. Every time they've been asked, they immediately go do it, uh, and they've never had a positive drug test. Neither one of them ever has any sort of history with this, yet 
they feel that they're being singled out. And they may have a point. What do you think, Bernard? I'm not going to lie to you. When you're hot, they come testing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) When you're really good and when you're, like, ranked in the world, um, I remember when I was ranked, like, in the top three in the world, they was coming to drug test me, like, twice a week. Mm Mm-hmm. And during that time, I hadn't um, passed. I mean, I hadn't failed any drug tests. So when you're hot, man, they're coming for you. You know, whether you're on it or not. When you're a really good ball player uh, for football or basketball, they're coming to test you. So that's just that's just that's what that's what comes with being so good. I w- I would have a uh, an expectation that when you go to run a race, certainly at the levels that you ran at the, at the, the world championship and the, and the elite level of track and field, I would have an expectation that certainly everybody in the final and most likely everyone who complete, competes at a world-class event is going mm-hmm. to be tested during the event. I would have that expectation. I would not expect that. So, so every yeah, race... Absolutely. No, absolutely. That is correct. Everybody gets tested in the final. For of every championship, for every race, every, uh, yeah, for for mm-hmm. every every elite, well, not level. every race, just a, just the final race, not every. Okay, race. so it's just the finals. So we'll we'll get back yeah. to this on the other side of the break. But what I was going to say, so I was going to ask you, and we'll get your answer on the other side of the break. Is you know that you're going to be tested for that final race, but you right. definitely saw an increase in the middle of the week. Hang on to line. We'll mm-hmm. get to this on the other side of the break. Stay with us, Bernard Williams, Olympic sprinter. Uh, Got Colin, got Simple Joe. I'm Robbie Shanks. We'll be right back to close out the show. It's the ticket. A little bit of stay in your lane music. You can find this on iTunes and SoundCloud. We'll come back to Bernard Williams in just a second here. Before we do, I want to remind you that if you've never been to Rodizio Grill, it's a Brazilian steakhouse that's an awesome experience for the entire family. Enjoy homemade Brazilian sides, a gourmet salad bar, and endless selection of grilled meats and items carved right at your table. The best part, you get to enjoy as much as you'd like. Over a dozen grilled meats served at Rodizio, including steak, chicken, pork, fish, and lots more. Some of the favorites include the signature top sirloin steak, the sweet and spicy chicken, the bacon-wrapped pork loin, and glazed pineapple. All absolutely delicious. Find them at 605 East Gregory Street, just past the Pensacola Bay Center. Look for them online at Rodizio.com or call 850-466-2113. Also want to remind you about our friends over at Fort Walton Beach Auto Brokers. If you are ready for the ultimate no-pressure car buying experience, then it's time to check out Fort Walton Beach Auto Brokers. It is easy. Just go to fwbab.com. Let one of their sales associates help you find the vehicle that meets your needs. In-house financing is available. No credit application will be refused. Fort Walton Beach Auto Brokers with two locations, Highway 98 West of Hobart and 604 North Bell Parkway, where nobody, nobody, nobody. Joe, a little slow on the reaction time, but that's okay. When nobody sells for less. We'll work on it. We're, we're going to work on that yeah, with we'll Simple Joe. It. All right, so we got to bring back in Bernard Williams. We were talking to you just before the break. Um, we we're talking about this situation. You know, we, we, saw, we heard Eric Reed go through this uh, with the, the Carolina Panthers. Um, uh, we also heard about uh, OBJ is now mm-hmm. saying that he's being drug tested more frequently by the NFL, by the league, than other players and believes he's being uh, targeted and singled out. We're talking with uh, Olympic sprinter Bernard Williams. Um, and as we said, the expectation is you get to the final of an elite level, a world-class race, everyone across the board is going to be tested. But as you receive your highest, say, top three ranks rankings in the world, um, the testing in between meets, in, in between competition, you said that got a little bit more intensive. Is that right? Yeah. Absolutely. Got to love one word answers on radio. (laughs) Oh, no, no, no. No, yeah, yeah. Well, um, because when you, when you do really well, it just seems like they come, they come to test you more often when you don't run so well, or you're not performing well, they don't test you that often. (laughs) They're not that interested. They're like, if he's cheating, he needs the help. 
<laughs> yeah, my thing is, if he's getting tested, that's a good thing. Because yeah. Because he's performing well. Yeah. You know, that's a great thing. And as long as the tests stay positive, it's it's only really just going to be a, a testament to his character. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, the beastie well, I mean, has... As long as Go ahead. He, he shouldn't have anything to worry about if he's just performing and doing what he's supposed to do. Exactly. Exactly. And and it hasn't had a failed test in his history, a, a healthy way into his career. So I don't expect that that's something that we'll see out of him. He's just, he's more just annoyed that, because you know, it's not, it's a rather invasive process as you, as you know, better than I, you know, it's just, you know, it's not that he is unwilling to do it. It's just, it's not something you want to do. It's a chore to go into the room and have some guy staring at your winky as you're trying to go. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not your favorite thing to do and you don't mm. want to do it more than once a week. I, I get that. I'd have stage for it. You'd have to run some water for yeah. me or something. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, but, you know, that's, that's, that is an uncomfortable thing you have to go through when, when you're getting drug tested and somebody looking at you doing, you know, taking care of your business. Yeah. But He's just looking time, you up and down, judging you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, it was one instance over the Olympics, the guy in the wheelchair. Oh, no. Was, uh, giving a, yeah. So he's at like eye level with it. Yeah, he was given a urine sample, and he had a prosthetic uh, front piece, and it fell out. And he and he was hiding someone else's pee inside of the prosthetic thing. <laughs> wait, so wait, wait, wait. Okay, I, I, I'm I'm mistaken. So the the person in the wheelchair was the athlete, or the person in the wheelchair was the judge? Was the athlete? Oh, okay. Okay. I had this mistake, and I thought a, I thought the a, tester was in a wheelchair, and I'm like, "Well, no, it's good fake, that he found work." <laughs> yeah, he had a fake he had a fake prosthetic thing up front. <laughs> oh, and, um, man. wow! What they used to call yeah, that? That was the the wizenator. The wizenator. They had the yeah. wizenator. <laughs> Listen, but, Colin. But that's important. But it's ahead. important because you have a lot of people who will come and try to take somebody else's urine to use it for testing and things like that. So. I understand why they really have to be careful and watch everybody. One of his teammates found out he was pregnant this way. <laughs> <laughs> I, heard, I heard one joke. Uh, the guy said he was taking some back to get a job. And then uh, the doctor read off the results. He said, he said well, um, it looks like you're pregnant, sir, and your dog has rabies. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he went and got everybody's pee in the house. <laughs> he just got collecting everybody. Listen, so Colin yeah. found an interesting list, and you're from Baltimore. He's a big fan of the Baltimore Ravens. I believe you're originally from Baltimore, right, Colin? Uh, Virginia. Virginia. Okay, but somehow I ended up a Ravens fan. Funny likes, how that works. He likes Ray Lewis. Yeah. Nice, nice. So <laughs> he found a list of the fastest Baltimore Ravens in history, and I mm. believe he wants to go through this list with you and ask how you would stack up in a race against these Baltimore Ravens. One on one. Maybe you could rank them in fact. So the first okay. one, we're gonna go with probably the most feared defender in Nash in the history of football, Ed Reed. Eddie Reed. How fast was Ed Reed? Does he ran say? a he ran a four five forty. Four five forty. Oh he'd smoke you. Really? Bernard smoke mm. hmm. you know what? That four five hit really hard. That was, that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I would I, I would hate to see if he ran four point two. Ooh. Ooh. Next it, would, one. it wouldn't be legal. It wouldn't be legal the way he hit people. And he no. used to have clean hits. Clean, Sometimes yeah, clean. he would Solid. get penalized. He would take that 4.5, hit someone so hard, they would give him a penalty just because he hit so hard. <laughs> they say the you know worth is mean? covered by two-thirds yeah, of water. Well, nothing, the other third is Ed Reed. Yeah, yeah no, nothing was him. illegal <laughs> about the hit. It was just like, we just feel nothing. bad for him, so we're throwing the flag. Yeah. It's like getting hit by that, a car. Exactly. No, no helmet touching. No, no spear and nothing. Just a hard hit, and he would get penalized because he hit so hard with this that four point five speed. The next one mm -hmm. on the he was traded to Baltimore. Steve Smith Senior. Oh. He See, we got to go back to his prime. We got to go back to his Carolina Panther days. And his no prime. forty listed right now, but Steve Smith Senior versus Bernard Williams, straight up forty yard dash shoot smoke. I would get him, no question. Yeah, but no. Now, now he he fun. would he would smoke him in speed. The question is, is Steve Smith a short guy? He talked trash the entire way. Yeah, let's say they got to go up for a pass. Bernard's pretty tall. Steve Smith's kind of a short guy. Who's going up to get that pass? 
Mm. Okay, well, Bernard Steve. doesn't like to get hit, so I'm going to say Steve Smith. Yeah, Steve Smith got me on that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Who we got next, Colin? <laughs> uh, we're going to go Lamar Jackson, quarterback of the Ravens. Now, this guy might be MVP of the league this year, Bernard. This he's mm. I don't know about fast. He's certainly shifty. Very let's talk shifty. about let's talk about shiftiness. He's fast, but Bernard what is, is smoking. What is his forty? What what is his what's, time? What's in his the forty fourth? time? What's his shuttle run time too, Colin? Yeah. I Joe, feel- you 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 do these football camps. Shuttle time is what tells you shiftiness, right? Shiftiness, yeah. How how quick you are yeah, on your change feet. the direction. Oh, Lamar yeah. Jackson had a four three forty. Yeah, it's that's fast. Three. That's fast. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that four three is fast. That's one of the fastest uh, times in the NFL. When yeah. you look at the combine. So I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say straight line. I'm still going with my boy. I'm still going yeah. with Bernard, but it. he might have you at, at with four, three speed. If he is able to apply that to a shuttle run with his shiftiness, he might have you in that one, Bernard, just in a shuttle no, run. No, no, no. <laughs> I put my money on me every time. I'm telling All you. Day. Only way he would beat me is because I got a little bit of rust on my wheels. Okay. (laughs) We might have to set this up. I would love to see not a race, a a shuttle run competition between the two of them. That would be interesting, right, Joe? That would be awesome. All right. And the last one. Who we got last? He was a former quarterback from, he was the former quarterback for the Ravens. If you say Joe Flacco. Not Joe Flacco. Tyrod Taylor. (laughs) Tyrod, yeah. He's quick. Yeah, but he's Mm. he's fast. He was Michael Vick Jr. at Virginia Tech. Yeah. I think you're all about the same age. You feel like Tyrod Taylor's been in the league forever. Played for every team in the NFL, I feel like. Seriously. Seriously. What was his what was his 40 time? Four five two. Oh yeah, that's nothing. Yeah. No, oh yeah, I get him. I get him. He would he him. wouldn't even get off the line. There's a couple others, Ray Rice, but he's disgrace. Yeah, yeah. disqualified. Yeah. Disqualified. Who else we got, Colin? <laughs> uh, Tory Smith, Ray Lewis, four six. Ray yeah, Lewis would Ray guys. Lewis would be look, scary though. I, I would, Imagine being 250 with, pounds running that. Fast. How much faster would you be running from Ray Lewis? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it depends on if it's a straight line or, or if you have a knife in his hand. Yeah. Wow. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see him pulling you up in the passenger him, seat. Run. You had to uh, do it to him. Beast of the night, Giannis double double. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Bernard, thanks so much for being a part of the show. We will be back tomorrow. Oh, uh, who knows who the lineup will be, but I'll be here. Colin will be here. Joe will be in the building somewhere. We'll get to it. Yes.